Core Keeper is a survival game where you mine, build, fight, craft, and farm to unravel the mysteries of the ancient core. In this video, I'll be playing 100 days of Core Keeper, and my goal is to kill all the bosses the game has to offer, from giant slimes to a giant worm in the sea. Join me in my adventure as I play 100 days of Core Keeper. Since Core Keeper doesn't really have a night and day cycle, I decided every 15 minutes in the game is one day. So let's begin. After uh, touching a giant egg looking rock, I got teleported here to a very dark dungeon place. And this is how our story begins in Core Keeper, day one. I chose to be a miner. I got a free copper pickaxe and some food rations. So I guess we'll start our journey fairly easy since we have wood. Since it was very dark, I decided to make some lanterns. I'm gonna light up the place. I then made myself a crafting bench. And <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> Alright, so here. Uh, let's place it here. Our crafting bench. What can we craft? Let's see. Oh, with the wood we collected, we managed to craft ourselves a wooden sword. Not sure what the hoe is for at the moment. Let's go for a wooden helmet, a wooden armor, and a wooden pants. This would help us on our journey. Good defense, right? I also made myself a livestock workbench. I'm not sure what this do at the moment. And it seems we need dirt walls and copper bars in order to make more crafting stations in our very first fight in this game it seems there what are these oh my god <laughs> we got a hat from this this is already way better than our current helmet why not we're a mushroom now <laughs> i stumbled up on an area with it looks like there's a tree and what a farm i think there's even a goat here is this friendly I'm gonna name him Goat. Wait, actually, it's a cattle. I'm dumb. And cattle. Gattle. <laughs> Honestly, didn't know how to feed this cattle, so I just left it alone. I don't know how to feed it. <laughs> I think it's better if I make a chest first, because I'm full on inventory. Alright, so I made a furnace. Now I can smelt some copper ores, which we need to make other stuff. For the leash, we need fiber, so we can get our goat here. After mining some more, I stumbled upon an area where it seems like there's a divine tree here. After mining some more, I came across our ruins. What looks like the remains of a civilization. I mean, it gives a lot of items. Oh, there's a chest! Ooh, that's so much for civilization. After getting my hands on some copper, I finally had materials to make a cooking pot and a salvage and repair station. After waiting for a while, I also had enough to make a... Never mind. Wait, items break. So this was the time I realized that items actually break and now I don't have any more copper pickaxe i don't know how to repair it yet ah we have the salvage and repair station uh, it's finally time to lay down our cooking pot and salvage and repair station so for now let's repair our pickaxe oh wait wait wait, wait. <laughs> we're putting it there all right wait wait how do you huh i need a scrap part okay i have some it seems we managed to repair our copper pickaxe and oh we can also reinforce it with a copper bar. So yeah, now our pickaxe are stronger than ever. I'm in desperate need of wood right now to make more items. But I don't have any idea where to get wood. Oh, there! Oh. The, the timing was good to find this wood because I honestly don't have any more wood. I can finally make more torches. Oh, there's an X on the ground. What is this? So with my shovel, I tried getting it and I got a... I think it's a seed. Wow. This is a... Ooh. I'm not sure what's better. <laughs> Let's just put it here. It seems we got a uh, bomb pepper seed from that. Okay, what a treasure. I found an egg Hello there. while exploring. It's hatchable. It's called a mysterious feathered egg that seems to react to your presence. Is there a way to hatch it? I wonder. Alright, after getting enough wood, I managed to make myself a copper workbench. 
which I'm gonna place right here. And it provided us access to make a copper pickaxe, a shovel, and a, oh, also some fishing rod. Finally, something that expands our inventory. We got a bell pocket, and also we can craft ourselves a small lantern. That's neat. So with uh, new items on hand, our inventory expanded, and we also emit a small light. Pretty cool. Let's actually make something from the glow tulip and the mushroom. It's a mushroom tulip salad. It adds 4 blue glow for 2 minutes and it heals us 4.2 health per second. Oh, that's pretty good. We might not need the lanterns that much anymore. Right, with enough material, I decided to make myself a glass melter and a copper anvil. And now I'm out of materials. We'll need to make more. <laughs> Alright, so we can smelt glass using sand on the smelter. And then for the anvil, we can make armors. We don't really need the helmet. We have a better helmet. The mushroom cap. So I guess our choice of armor should be the slime armor. Because right now, I think we're surrounded by slimes. And I think that's a pretty good idea. Alright, for the rest of day two, I decided to clean up the base. Hey, go. Hey, more passion. More passion. More passion. More I crafted myself a watering can. It was actually time to make a farm so we can fo get food. And good thing there's like a water source nearby. I can just use this as my farming area. Planting all the seeds so we can cook all the food we need. The only good thing here is we glow. Ooh, a new plant to our inventory. A bell pepper. A bomb pepper. <laughs> a bell pepper. Finally, a root seed. I guess we can make a wood farm in our base all right we're having an easy time with our bow an area that looks like it has a lot of loots we are crossbow we got crossbow right now the bow is better because we reinforced it wait there's a secondary use oh you can i didn't know there was a skill in this game oh a chest Ooh, copper sword let's go we don't need this anymore oh there was this button to quick stack okay i'm so dumb Maybe there's a copper hole. Makes lo okay, should make life easier. Oh, nice. Actually, it makes life easier. Wait, what? What is this? Oh my god, what the heck? That was a bomb. Oh, oh, oh. Purple. Oh, it's a summoning idol. Oh yeah, it is a slime boss. Alright, so I guess we're gonna stay away from this area until we're prepared i seem to discover an area that looks like a forest so many grass what's in here a bush oh a chest oh we have so many seeds what's this grab kapok then you see the plant that gives fiber nice a root seed okay we yeah i forgot we need to make the uh, tree farm and more seeds that's good to know and a free chest <laughs> Finally, we got ourselves a ring. And it gives mining damage. Nice. The sound effects for this copper sword is so cool. Wait, giant mushroom. What? Plus 25 max health when eaten? Alright. I've expanded my farm quite a bit. Because we've been getting a lot of seeds lately. I can make an electronics table and a railway forge. Alright, let's see here. We can make minecarts. And for the electronics, we can make a generator off of this. Or we can make a table saw for the plank, I guess. Alright, with 8 glass pieces on hand, I made an incubator. Let's place it here. Put the egg we found. <laughs> Wait, it needs electricity. <laughs> and with this 10 copper bar, the generator. Oh, it's running. So the raincoat, do I have enough slime? I do. And a shield. Okay, so we have a raincoat and a shield. Oh, space, I see. <laughs> oh my god, we have a shield now. That's cool. Yeah, since we have gears now, I think it's time to fight the slime boss. What's this? Snowman hat. 12 armor. It may good. <laughs> We're a snowman now. <laughs> Alright. Ooh, chest. I had a copper key. Hey, okay, what do you give? Oh, 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 we got a necklace, our first necklace. Two life, one hit. That's nice. 
I have no idea what that is for, but thank you so much. Alright, let's start the fight. Oh, see? It wasn't that hard. Look at this HP go down. We're not even slowed. Oh. oh my god. That's close. So far, so good. Oh! Okay, good thing I have a shield. Never charging my attack again. That's dumb. Oh, what's he doing? Okay. Hey, the shield helps a lot. Okay, good. We killed it. Our first boss. Let's go. We found a NPC. First oh, a necklace. 15 max HP. What's this? Sticky stick. Oh, this is actually good for kiting. We're gonna combo it with a bow. Not the crossbow. Crossbow sucks. Oh, look at our... Alright, so Galer uh, the slime boss was actually called Glurch the Abominous Mass. And after killing Glurch, I added a crystal to the statue. And now we have... What is this? <laughs> I guess the three items we'll need to unlock. Which would be Gorm the Devourer. And the Hive Mother. And then we can get a slime sword. Ooh. So I decided to summon the slime again as I... Oh, why does it look different? Why does it feel like it's harder? Oh my god, I did not think that it would be this tanky. Oh my god, it hurts so bad. Oh my god. I can't. <laughs> I need better gears. Oh, gold. Huh. Oh, well, we needed a spin, but we found gold. Good to know. Oh, larvas. New monsters. Oh, they're rushing. They're hungry. They're rushing for me. <laughs> okay. Larva meat. Yeah, it seems I figured out how to craft it. You just needed to bring the material. But for now, let's go look for the Gorm the Devourer. This is the first thing we can see here. And... Ooh, it scans. And if we press M, we see him. That's Gorn the Devout. Oh my god, he's pretty far. Oh, there's a cow here. The Forgotten Ruin. Seem to have discovered a new area. I feel like I'm not supposed to be here yet. So, what happened? Oh, an owl. Wait, why, why am I holding it? How do I equip this? Oh my god, I have an owl. Owl looks. And it gives 7.6% movement and 6.5% damage. I decided to make myself a copper breastplate and a copper pants as I didn't need to fight the slime boss anymore. Ooh, come here. <laughs> oh my god, we're pulling this thing. So I made a little farmhouse or fence yard house for my cow. At least he has a, a place to call home. I fully covered the base with... A paintable flooring. I'm not sure if it looks more decent now, but that was better than before. Oh, I seem to discovered an area with a worship golden heartberry. Have a oh oh can be cooked. What is this? Uh, armor. Oh, 3318. Oh my god, I have a good armor. Oh my god, there's so many <laughs> worms here. As I battled the swarms of larvas, I, I actually gotta run. Oh my god. I want an AOE! Or oh, is that a giant in R? It's a giant in R. Oh, but oh lord! I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive. Yeah, I'm honestly... Uh... <sighs> Short in damage. <laughs> oh, is that Gorn? Oh my god, he's a big chunky boy. <gasps> Gorn is here! Gorn is here! Let's see how big this guy is. Oh. Hi. Bye! Oh, he ignored me. Oh. Our cow gave us some milk. With enough materials on hand, I finally made myself a tin workbench. We can finally have access to bug nets, bigger bag, some better tools, some anvils, music workbench. There's so many things now. 
an alchemist table, bait table. So I crafted myself a whole bunch of tin items. Ooh, my damage is so high now. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my lord, there's so many. Oh, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. Ooh. <laughs> I decided to fight the King Slime or Galurch. I guess this is a Terraria crossover event. But yeah, I decided to fight the King Slime again as I wanted to get the uh, big chest it provides. I needed one more chest to store my items in. Alright, we're so close. I can only get him one shot at a time now. He, he, he's faster, you know. He's faster than ever. He's, he's gonna die. So yes! Okay. Oh, crown. Oh my god. Armor. Okay. We're a king now. I worked on my garden since I needed more food to buff me up. Like I'm officially a gardener. I also made myself an alchemist stable. It provided me the ability to craft potions. For this day, I tried out fishing and it wasn't really that enjoyable, but I really wanted the dodge chance it provided and the skill tree. But yeah, it takes a lot before we can actually reach that. Maybe around level 60 or something. So for now, I gave up on it. I went mining for iron instead as I needed a lot of them to progress further. Oh, I guess Gorn comes here. What's this? A cute little bug. You're mine now. To the farm! Okay, good boy. Our King Slime Egg seems to be cracked now, so we can open it up. And we got a Prince Slime. Look at the Terraria crossover. We have a cute slime with a crown, just like his owner or his master. He's my new companion now. After smelting all my iron ores, I had enough to actually make a iron workbench, an upgrade to our current workbench. We finally now had access to new stuff like the iron anvil, a large watering can, and a bucket, and some pickaxe. Let's go. I decided to raid this larva dungeon or area, and I found myself some chest with a curious loot. After going home, I needed a lot of wood, so I decided to start making automation, a tree farm. We're gonna be making a generator and powering up these drills so it will automatically break the th trees that grows off out of the seed. So we will have unlimited supply of wood. I continued my adventures at the layer of the insects or larvae. And I discovered the hive mother as I was fighting for my life from larva to larva. Oh, we found the hive mother. <laughs> Before I initiated the fight, I wanted to clean up the area first so I know nothing will hinder me from this epic battle. I dropped my bomb, I initiated the fight. But as I kept going and going, it kept breathing more larvae to target me until it was impossible of me to actually beat it while taking mind of the larvae. So I ran for my life. And as I was exploring more to get items, I discovered this abandoned base. And here I found a battle axe, which would prove very useful for my upcoming battle with this wide slash. So cool. Oh, Gorn is here. Oh, Lord. <laughs> you almost crushed that to death. Before we could have a chance at the Hive Mother, I needed to farm more iron. So I ventured to the right side of the map again and met this big giant chef monster. The big bad chef. And with our slingshot, we killed him rather easily with no match at all. And then I also discovered the ruins of these cavelings and I plundered it. After a full day's adventure, I started grafting new gears to make our character glow up. I made a new bow, reinforced the axe, and I also opened this lock chest and I got a hand mortar. Look at this bad boy pack a punch. Okay, this is gonna be so useful against the hive. 
And now, look at how amazing this axe is. Oh my god, that's so good. And here we are again, round two with the Hive Mother. But before I engage with the fight, I wanted to clean up the area first. So there'll be no disturbances. And we start the fight. Our axe already proved itself to be a good asset to our items now. As the Hive Mad Mother can't tank these big numbers on damage. As we whack and whack and as he spawned her larvae, we easily wide slash them to death. Oh, he's angry. And as the battle go on, well, we're pretty over geared right now, so it wasn't really a problem. And with our mob control secondary skill wide slash, it proved no problem at all to fight this larva, I mean hive mother. Let's go kill the hive mother. No way, let's go. I Ooh. A pants. After returning home from the battle, I encountered Gorn. So I tried fighting it, chasing it down, and it actually tried fighting back, so I engage in battle with it. Oh he's angry, he's angry, he's angry. Wait, he's not that hard to beat, actually. <laughs> and he's dead. Oh my god, that was pretty easy. Gordon, I feared you, but no more. I obtained a cute larva chest, and look how cute our character is now. We're a worm. As I returned home victorious from killing two bosses, Gorm the Devourer, I unlock two armors, and finally, finally, our recall idol. We don't need to walk home anymore. And I also unlock the Hive Mother's Crystal, giving us two disappointing weapons actually. But the third one is something that we need for the main quest or the main bosses we need to kill. I then built a house for this new item we have that could spawn another NPC that we could trade with in our base. Thou hast awakened us. Never have we seen a creature such as thee. It once was a chiving civilization here, but it seems all of it has been lost. We must have been dormant for aeons. We wonder. Okay. Now what? What, what you do, man? We must ask something of thee. Seek the ancient titans still roaming, roaming beyond the Great Wall. Destroy them and collect their souls. With their energy, we can restore what once was. In return, thou shall be able to go back to whence you thou came. With the power with which we now imbue thee, the Great Wall shall be opened as thou layest a hand upon it. Okay. Oh, we have the power now. Thou must travel far out to the Great Wall and lay a hand upon it to open. I then went on a journey to the right side of the map, looking for the wall. There, the wall! It's going down, or up, or down. It is going down. The wall is gone. As I kept going right, I finally discovered a new area, the beach. Where am I now? What is this? It's the sea. The sunken sea. These things are so tanky. Heck. Since everything here was pretty tanky, I decided to just go home. As I arrived on the base, I crafted myself an ancient hologram. And as I opened it, it was an NPC that could make us scanners. These are the bosses in the game and these are our target for this 100 days. We're gonna kill every boss in this game before 100 days end. The flourishing wilderness in which Azia society types west. And here was our first clue to the first titan we need to kill. So we go to the left. But before all of that, I decided to renovate, renovate my farm. 
I expanded this area that looks pretty good with light things all over. My future plan here is this will be the place where I put my garden so I can easily access all the produce I want to make and it would look nicer since this place looks better. I feel like I forgot to click the record button when I went to this side of the map but yeah day 28. I went to the left side of the map, I discovered this area, I think it's called the Azaleus Wilderness. And there's so many new things here like green grass and some yellow plants. What our main goal here is basically to collect some poison slimes, some Azaleus feathers so we can scan for the bosses. Also, this place provided me with access to get scarlet ores, now we can make sprinklers for our farm. So I hurriedly made a scarlet workbench to access new items to craft and I then went on more automation mining these giant rocks, this giant iron rock and this egg from the merchant finally hatched and now we got an ember tail, cute doggo. I then went back to Azaleus wilderness to gather more scarlet ores. I crafted myself a new pickaxe, the scarlet pickaxe, which should help us farm scarlet ores faster. Also after breaking this giant box, I managed to get myself a scarlet drill, which is one of the amazing things I got in this game and I kept it until late game. It's very useful it can drill through anything very fast but the durability doesn't last that long that's the only downside to this after a huge haul of scarlet ores i was now able to make more sprinklers so i expanded my farm into six big sprinkler size farm and i worked on it as fast as i could and i screwed up by shoveling underneath me and I also looked all over the place to find big chunks of rocks like this so we can automate both the bronze and tin ores if ever we need a lot in the future. And what the dog do when this larvae destroying my farm so I needed to clean up the place and barricaded it. I also barricaded my iron farms and also I forgot to mention I received this sledgehammer along Azaleus Wilderness. I don't know when, but it's so good. Look at this thing smash everything. It's very handy. It can just smash through walls very fast and makes it like looking for stuff easier and getting ores. And if you're wondering, I actually don't know how to rotate the drills on this point of the game. So I only have two drills at a time. As I visited my farm, I was missing some crops. So it didn't take me long to realize that the animals were actually eating my crops. So I barricaded my farm so they won't be able to eat the crops we have. I can put the crops on the feeder, but if they eat it themselves, they eat the seed along with it. And we can't have that. Stay put, you bad boys. So I barricaded them here and give them a feeder to feed on. It took me this long to figure it out I can rotate the drills. So I started working on it right away, expanding my tin farm. And then afterwards, I made more drills. The stronger version, the scarlet drills. I wanted to farm the big scarlet ores. So we will have unlimited supply of scarlet as well. We will never run out. F stumbled upon a ruin of a giant golem or I don't know whatever the heck this is Ooh, what's this Ooh, an ancient guardian necklace I needed about 90 poison slimes to actually make the scanning item so I built myself a poison slime farm from all the ground slime I collected at Azaleus in hopes that I can finally craft that scanner and beat ivy Having all the required materials, I crafted the scanner for Azaleus, the Sky Titan. And it looked like he was close to us the entire time. Well, not really. And I went on 
to survey the area. And it seems I have missed a very important part in this. I forgot to make the summoning item as he flew over us and didn't really find us threatening. We needed something to lure him in to engage the fight. Since I didn't have any summoning item for Azaleos, I decided to visit this mold dungeon hoping to get some good equipments but I actually didn't get anything good aside from maybe a blow dart which I use on the future upcoming battle with Azaleos. After all that adventure, I went home and gathered all the resources I could from my automation farms. I crafted myself a handy tool that could break the upper walls of the world. So look at the glow up my base has with all these lights shining through it. After gearing myself up, it was time to fight Azeus, the Sky Titan. So I proceeded to summon him and the battle begins. Oh my god. With a drill on hand, I easily broke these crystals. If left alive, I mean the crystals, it would heal Azeus and it would uh, prolong the battle. So, yeah, drill OP. Boss isn't a big deal. The shield helps a lot, and our drill helps a lot. Alright. No problem. We're just gonna parry. Alright. Parry and poison this guy. Death. Let's fully heal, because why not? Wait, if he dies here, he's in rage. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> Let's go, Azeus. We got a new item that could summon another NPC to move in our house. So I quickly made haste on building this house for the NPC. And also, we got a lot of really nice accessories to boost our character's battle powers. Hello there. This NPC seems to to sell everything related to fishing, like fish, baits, and accessories. I also had enough materials now to make a scanner item for Ivy, the poisonous slime, giant poisonous slime. So after restocking my supplies and repairing all my gears, I went over to the location of the map and fought Ivy. The giant poison slime. I think I got this. Oh, oh my god. Oh, I shield. <laughs> I managed to parry that. Yeah, we have, we have to. Oh my god, where's my button for my range weapon? Where's my range weapon? Okay, there we go. Alright. Alright. Uh, we're, we're doing range attacks right now. Oh my god. Oh, he breaks those. Right. Our heels are really... Right. Okay. I got this. Dying, but I got this. Okay, we got him. Oh my god, that was so close. We got some 
not so good loot but good enough to actually change our gears because it gave like a good set effect and we had a poison dart since we have defeated azeos and ivy our next target is omoroth and morpha at the sunken sea at the right side of the map where we first touched the wall the one with the coral wood and the beach Ah, uh, melee armors. Oh, it's actually pretty fast. <laughs> Alright, we've arrived. You know, I could have just made a bridge. <laughs> I didn't need the boat. And so, here is the new ore type called Octarine. They look like balls of pearls. There were so many new things here, like these new fruits. Uh, pineapple. <laughs> And the other one is a papaya, but they call it orange and blue. And there's also coral wood. And there's also these shells we need to collect that would make the scanner. I seem to have stumbled upon this ruins while exploring the sea. I even found myself a new sledgehammer here, the Octarine sledgehammer. And also, as I explored the cave, I battled golems and cavelings, more golems and more cavelings. One of the caveling actually dropped its staff, and now I have a new ranged weapon. I also found a tentacle whip. As I went home, because my inventory is full, I changed my mob farming area. The ones with the slippery slime ground because i needed 90 pieces of the blue slimes in order to make the scanning items for since i had new seeds the pine grapple and pupaya i made another portion i mean section of the farm on my farming base and i planted them both and the resulting product is a juice that gives like 20% more melee damage and 20% more range damage. Alright, so with enough material on hand, we can finally make ourselves an Octarine workbench. Wait, a Pearl Lantern! Ooh. Oh my god, this is so good. A bag. Alright, we have a new bag on hand. More inventory slots. We have a better lantern as well. Oh, what's the oh my lord a portal so i installed the mod which does not require the portal to charge anymore so basically i can use the portal anytime i want as long as there's a portal I farmed the forgotten ruins for the mechanical parts as i know these things the vases and the big giant balls actually give some and also the mobs here actually drop some crystals or mechanical parts and i didn't know that but well i had enough after breaking all the vases oh so I decided to bring my portal over to my adventure here as I just needed to put it in place and craft another one at base so I can continue where I left off on my resource gathering journey here in the sunken sea. I was looking for three things here, a giant octarine ball, the slime boss, and Omorok, Omorath, Amor, <laughs> the kraken boss. So yeah, we found the big giant pearl, so I decided to set up the base here for the portal. I'm gonna be leaving drills here to automate gathering the materials for Octarine. And I went home using my recall idol. I returned here anytime. I expanded my blue slimes farm as it was really rare to find these in the sunken sea. Mechanical parts were still a menace because <laughs> we don't have any 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 mechanical parts in stock. So I hunted these cavelings again to gather some mechanical parts so we can craft another portal so we can go back to our marble base to set up the drilling station. Right here. Ooh, yeah boy. You just click and you go through the place. 
After trying out the portal, I went home and upgraded a bunch of my gear, including this axe here. That's so cool. And then I also crafted a whole set of Octarine armor, and now I look like a merman. I then finished setting up the automated farming for the Octarine marble or boulder stone. I then continued my adventures to gather more shells and slimes so we can make scanners to find the bosses. Wait, I hear- Oh my god! Oh, I think- What? Can I- What? How do I fight this giant worm? This worm is the Atlantean worm, which I can't fight yet, not until the end game. It's the final boss, basically. We need to gather the ores to make the summon item for this thing. So I went on my way and gathered more shells. Okay, where are you, little Kraken? Time to search for Amaroth. Oh, he's... oh uh, I was actually near. Alright, so we have a clear goal now. Which is Omara. After gearing up and preparing for the fight with Omaroth, I was on my way. I'm on my way. I decided to make a setup for the battle with Omaroth. So I laid down some bridges. And afterwards, with lore on hand and the fishing pole buffing myself up, I'm gonna start the fight. Right. Fighting Omaroth a sea titan. Yeah, it's gonna be easy because oh my god he broke. Oh, oh my god he actually broke my platforms. It's okay. Oh look at the melee speed. Oh, oh that hurts, that hurts, that actually hurts. Oh my god. Well, that's it. So, range weapon he uses the tornado attack. Alright. Oh my god, it's coming back. Oh, his legs are multiplying. Let's keep using potion. Ah, buff up again. Where's this guy now? Oh my god, the legs are actually... We think we need to take care of this so it doesn't multiply. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh lord, oh, oh lord, no! What I? After that defeat, I needed to farm more cave links in order to get gemstones and mechanical parts so I can make another portal so I have an easy way of going to Omoroth. I fo actually found this uh, temple of cave links where it had so many loots here, I mean vases. So After crafting myself a portal, I head over to Omoroth again, the Kraken. I set up my base here, putting a portal in case we die again. I also patch up the battlefield so we'll have a cleaner field to fight on. And now, it was time to fight the boss once more. Alright, this time I'll make sure to clear the tentacles away. So it won't get out of hand and I have more space to run around. Where is he this time? Right here. Safe distance. If this tornadoes are hard to dodge, I think I'll just shield up. The tornadoes are so annoying. Oh lord. And again, half HP, let's go! Okay. He's angry. He's actually angry.
crazy. Oh my god, this is such a annoying fight. Making sure I'm using my. Making sure I'm using my shield now. Okay, almost there. Is he okay? Let's focus on the boss. Crazy now, they're here. Where are you? You're almost dead. Just die. Oh, where, where's my? Oh my god. Oh my god, I misplaced my positioning. Right. Yes! And that, Omoros died just like that. And we got this power. I decided to just wait for my slime farm to produce enough blue slimes. So I instead decided to just go north where the desert of beginning resides. And after so much digging to the north, we finally found the Desert of Beginnings. And oh my god, my mining damage is very low here. But I can see the Galaxite Ore just on this side. It's gonna take a while, but let's prioritize getting Galaxite so we can get a better pickaxe. I decided to set up a portal base just north, I mean near here. We'll be using this for now until we can locate a giant galaxite boulder orb or ore. I continued my journey to get a lot of galaxy ores and I managed to find this volcano which does not really do anything aside from a good scenery. And I need to collect 30 of these red scarab things in order to make the scanner for Raka. I have a bit of an update on my gears. I'm using assassin cloak and armor now. Also, I had enough materials to make myself a galaxite workbench. I decided to level up my fishing for this day because I really want that dodge chance passive on day 69 as well. But this time the sunken sea because uh, this place drops a helmet called a diving gear which increases your fishing power. On day 71, I decided we had enough of fishing. But we had a big haul. A lot of new items. Like chests and a jellyfish that has health regeneration. After exploring the desert of beginnings again, I finally found the giant galaxy ore. We can now set up our automated farming here and transfer our portal here. After finishing up this area with automation, I need to look for the scarabs now. So we can start scanning for the boss. We only had 29 days left on this challenge and we still need to kill 3 more bosses. Raka, uh, Morpha the slime and the magma slime. I mean 4. There's also the, the latest boss, the Atlantean worm. As I was exploring to get more scarab fragments, I discovered this magma area and decided to explore it. As I plundered the area, I fought a lot of magma slimes and butterflies that spew fire. The place will looks really cool, like an old abandoned dwarven base or something. And I scavenged through the loot here, I found myself a lava battle axe. An improvement to our axe weapon, it has now a wide slash that consists of fire damage. After a long days of farming in the, the desert of beginnings, I decided to make myself a 
magma slime farm at home but it doesn't only spawn the magma slime it also spawns the butterfly which was, which was very annoying oh uh, yeah so we needed like 120 pieces of slime so i really needed to farm these much and then from day 77 up till day 80 i just decided to level up my fishing because i really wanted a dodge chance everything at the desert of beginnings can kill us because they're very strong now they i spent four days fishing in this game i got so many loots from all the fishing and for our level 51 it's not enough to actually get the dodge chance but this is the purpose of leveling this up so we can get this after a bit more exploring to the desert of beginnings i discovered this ice wall but it was actually not ice but a crystal it seems this was where we can find a solarite. So I immediately dig toward that shining ore and got myself some solarite. Also, I decided that this would be a good base of operation. So I laid down my portal and went home and just repaired all my gears. And I wanted to come back to explore more of this place. Oh, it's a area, an actual area. Are these chests? Alien tech. Desert Ruby. It seems the monsters in this place are really strong. I feel like they could kill us just by trying. I got myself a really good helmet for mining. Plus 60 mining damage. Also, it's a really good armor. With 25 armor and 40 health and 9.5% damage. Damn! I also got myself the legwear just for destroying boxes in here. I was pretty excited from the loot I got on this place, so I decided to plunder this place more, killing all the alien monsters I encountered, also plundering all these cool looking furnitures that I don't have yet. And I was also very lucky for two solarite chests to randomly spawn after breaking the crystal wall. That was crazy. We now need to just make keys and open these up and see what uh, things we can get. After digging round and round at this place, I was looking for the entrance to the center of this place, but it was actually just here. I just did not notice that there was a way up here. So I decided to give it a try and uh, took a step at this alien stepping thing and it did a little alert and suddenly summoned monsters. I didn't know what to do. But after a while, I realized I just need to step on the stool or the area and it would charge up. Then I can maybe like get a reward from this. A little bit more. What happens if it's full? Alright, let's fully buff ourselves. Just to get ready. Okay, what happened? We got a chest. Oh. What? Oh my god, this is so good. What? But increase the damage taken. I got a really good necklace and ring. Basically, as the name suggests, it's called glass. Meaning a glass cannon necklace and a ring. I wasn't thinking of wearing the ring at all, but the necklace, it was uh, very tempting. 75% crit damage is so good to pass on. 30% more damage taken. Sure, let's just dodge everything. And since I got an NPC item again, I decided to make a room for the NPC, see what it can provide us with. And it seems to sell a good armor set called the hazmat suit, uh, the hazmat set. Which makes us immune to radiation. Probably useful in the future later. I opened two of the solarite chests I received and got a good armor called the gemson garment. So I immediately want to put it on use. And for the other chest, I got a sword and a crossbow. And let me tell you, the crossbow was really good for piercing the final boss. But you'll, you'll find out soon enough. And also a pet rock. 
Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, I actually got some seeds from the crystal cave. That's called crystal cave or solarite cave. And I planted them on my farm. I also made a tree farm for, uh, I guess, Gleamwood I received as well from the cave. So yeah, that's something. And as you can see, I have improved my tree farm. It, it has expanded. And we now have some robotic arm to pick up the loot and it would transfer it to the chest. Yes, science! I then went on my journey again to collect some scarab pieces, but oh, 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 I found another cave and this time it's with centipedes. With my crossbow in hand, look at my 1k crits, I easily defeated the centipedes and immediately explored what's inside. There seems to be these green radiation crystals which damages me 80 and I need to mine them in order to deactivate their effects I guess. They get stored in my inventory as long as these uh, random parasites stop attacking. As I explored deeper, I saw this alien tech that looks like a coffin. I was curious but as I interacted with it, it actually did nothing. So I just left it alone after killing all the mobs here. And thank you, Mr. Beetle, for helping us. Oh my god, the beetle died so fast. Crazy. Uh, let's avenge it. Also, these caves has have this giant snail and they drop solarite ores as you mine them. I didn't mean to kill one, but I was so happy with the solarite ores, I just went ahead and drilled some more. I explored some more, I robbed some snails out of their solarite, went home and made myself a solarite pickaxe as I had enough materials, and upgraded my gears, and then went exploring again on a magma cave, and after that I'd explored another solarite or crystal cave until finally we found the giant solarite ore. We can now start automating mining this thing. We will never run out of the ore again. I had to kill all the snails in the area as they destroy any block that blocks their way. So I'm so sorry buddy you had to go. Before actually coming back to the ore, I had to upgrade a lot of my gears, repair it, and made new gears and explored the magma cave completely. I now came back with all the stuff we need to actually make this into an automation farm. I first need to clear out the area and made sure it's suitable for farming. <laughs> I went home to grab some electronics but I decided to continue my farming instead so that's I had more seeds now. I made the uh, crystal cave, I forgot what it's called, a sunrise or something or a uh, moon corn. <laughs> oh yeah, these new food actually gave a really good buff that can give us more glow and defense and defense against bosses. So yeah, after that I went back to the crystal cave and finally completed our automation. Also forgot to mention we had enough fragments already so I made a scanner for Raka and now we can check where he is located. Where are you you little punk? Oh he's been there the whole time. That was done. I wanted to make more portal but it seems I was lacking in coral planks so I decided to make a coral wood farm and as you can see I made more than what we currently have for the other wood but i needed it as much as i can now because i wanted to also make a new boat so yeah it was a dire need to get this done we only have 10 days left before our challenge is done and we still haven't beaten a lot of bosses <laughs> And since I could, I made a scanner for the Atlantean worm since I, we had a lot of solarite ores. And it seems it's constantly on a move at sea. So I guess that's what we saw earlier in this gameplay playthrough. I gathered more corals and tried to kill more slimes as we were waiting for our coral farm to actually produce wood. So I just manually gathered it for now. I also, after after processing it to plank, I straight up head over to the Desert of Beginnings and went to Rakar's layer now. Now that we have 
We actually had enough to make another portal now, so I was on my way to the boss fight. Ra'akar, the Sand Titan. After arriving at the area, I made some home base where I can put my portal in. And after I readied myself up, checking all the gears that I have and the summon item, I head over to fight Rakar. As I place the thumper, it signals the start of the fight. Oh my god, that hurts. It's not that hard. Maybe. Oh my god, he's actually really tanky. Get me have a shield. What is that? It follows me around. Did I shield it? And get it off. Oh, it disappears after a while. Okay. Our ninja star will do its magic. What if I shield it? Okay, we can just shield it. Oh my god, that hurts. <laughs> oh my god, this rock car, I hate you already. So it doesn't damage until it explodes, so... We're gonna keep healing, buffing up her speed. I think I can melee this guy instead. Maybe... Oh my lord. Is better. You go. Have a lot of buttons. Oh, right now all I can do is defend. <laughs> hey. This fight has been epic. Okay, we need speed buff. We need attack speed buff. Okay, that lag, oh my god, it scared me. Great. So far so good. Move we'll attack speed buff. Let's go. Where's my pet slime? I was wondering where it got, went. Help me. Oh my god. Oh. Oh my god. Almost. This that reach level five happened to this guy. <laughs> yes, we killed the rock a car. That was close. He doesn't drop any chest. What? Oh, it didn't drop any chest. It dropped this. After that epic fight, it left me with a big wound, so I decided to just fish for the next two days, 92, 93, and 94. We managed to level up our fishing enough so we can have a level 2 on our dodge chance, and we also managed to gain a lot of stuff like 6 keys, but we don't have any chests to open it with. 
Well, this was a good haul. And finally, after our mob farm yielded enough slippery slime gel, I managed to track down Morpha, the aquatic mass. So I immediately head over there to fight this abomination of a slime. Place my portal in a safe place where I can come back if ever I died. <laughs> so yeah, let's go meet Morpha. Okay, embrace ourselves. All we can do is parry, heal, and charge. Okay, it's almost dead. We're kiting this guy. <laughs> Alright, he's dead. Let's go. After killing Morpha, I farmed him some more since I could. And after I got tired of it, it was time to actually farm more magma ore so we could locate the magma slime. And after getting enough magma, I scanned the world and I located Igneous just below the portal we had set. So I immediately head over and engage an epic battle with this fire slime. With two days remaining, I honestly couldn't afford to lose these fights. So I had to be very careful on fighting these monsters. The only two bosses left on our wanted list is Igneous and the Atlantean Worm. These two days would be enough for this. With a crossbow on hand, I engage the boss fight.
Okay, we have killed Ignis. Glorious. <laughs> uh, let's see what we get from here. We got a beast booster. Wow. A pants. Damn. With one more day remaining, I couldn't afford to wait. So I headed out to the sunken sea and immediately tried to seek out the Atlantean worm. And all it took was actually to place the bait in the water. And it would be baited <laughs> or lured. And the start and it, and this is the start of the fight. Here, here. Oh. Wait, I'm doing nothing. No damage. Wait. Oh, there, 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 there. Parts of his loop. Oh, I forgot. I should have went for the coral. Oh my god, that hurts. I forgot about the coral rings. Our boat speed. If we die here, we're going to. Okay, let's freaking go! Killed him. What? A ground to. Alright. Oh my god, level 17 sword? What the heck? Wait, what the heck? 100 max health? Let's go. With the defeat of the Atlantean Worm, we have defeated all the bosses in the game, thus completing our 100 days journey. But not yet. Since we had the materials, I went home and crafted myself new gears. I made myself a full Solarite gear set. So we have a lot of life on the hit on this set. It's not like we have any more monsters to fight, but I just wanted to dress up as a full solarite set. And also, I built a house for the seasonal events. This would mean the scent claws of this game would spawn, and I decorated a bit. And also made some fireworks to celebrate our 100 day journey. Thank you guys so much for watching and hope you guys have a happy holidays this Christmas and New Year. Advance, Merry Christmas or Happy New Year everyone. Thank you again for watching our 100 day video. Fireworks for victory. Alright, thank you. Bye.